things first to kick off the show i want to talk about is a recommendation for you guys out there again i'm going to keep doing this because i feel like it's a nice way to sort of share some music that i absolutely love listening to and you know it feels like the last few weeks have been pretty decent for album drops and d this past week was really really good with the release of avelino Ablino, right? Ablino, who I've been a real big fan of ever since I kind of discovered him from Ransom Bance's um, live stream. Ransom Bance is this Man United supporter who has a pretty good um, channel. I think he has a channel on Twitch. He also has a channel where he uploads clips on YouTube and he's a United kind of fan and basically does, you know, basically match reviews and whatnot. And there was a time around, I think around the pandemic where basically Ablino popped up and started to appear on that live stream a lot. And I kind of became a fan of his personality and then I found out later that he does music. So there's it's a kind of weird way to find an artist usually you find an artist for your recommendations from a friend but i found this guy directly directly because of um what you call it um because of a football live stream but he's really good so one of my favorites now coming up um for me he kind of is like a if this makes any more sense he's sort of like an upbeat version of, of wretch 32 as much as i love wretch he can sometimes send me to sleep and it can sometimes be a little bit too um a little bit too um a little bit too highbrow for me, especially with the lyricism in that. He's way, way, way above my flipping um, intellect level. So if I need something that kind of matches my level and also a little bit upbeat, I think Avelino is a really good um, option for it. He's got an album that just released now called God Save the Streets. I'm surprised this is actually the first debut album he's put out because I have a few of his other tapes here on my phone that I've been banging out for time that I thought were actually albums, but they're actually mixtapes. He's got one that came out in 2021 called Ego Kills and another one that's called No bullshit check those two out but definitely ego kills is definitely a banger I, I, I was playing that so often when that initially first dropped um 100k on that is absolutely amazing right to left is probably one of my favorite tracks off of ego kills but this new one called god save the streets by Avelino is absolutely amazing one of my favorite tracks on this album is track free and i really recommend you check it out because legitimately this is this 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 track was one of the tracks that if I were to listen to this for the first time at a concert somewhere, tears may be streaming down my cheeks if I listen to this because this kind of describe my upbringing in a real kind of coherent and really amazing way. Um, growing up in a sort of you know rough part of town where I did essentially because it's basically the um, the verse starts off like this. It says everybody starts off innocent, including me. So I relate to this brother like he's really family tree. He never really knew what love was, so he had to hit the streets because every time he was at home, his mum and dad used to beef, and it was uh, and it was just getting to him. Plus, there was no food to eat. His sis was going so hungry, she found it hard to sleep. Like, have you legitimately ever been in these situations? I have, right? Spoiler alert. Like, legitimately growing up in the squalors of poverty and you legitimately find it hard to sleep. Like, you know, the the flipping delights of having a couple of pieces of bread with some butter in between the piece of ham was a real, real, real treat. And sometimes, you know, sometimes you go it out because you're in between months and stuff. The parents haven't got paid. You obviously don't have a job because you have zero experience, so you can't help out. It's a little bit of a sticky one. So when he basically put this in the bar, I was like, oh, my God, he's speaking to me. This was definitely my upbringing. And it continues. He said he had dreams for his, he had dreams that his mother told him that he can't achieve. He cracked under all the pressure, started licking crack fiends. Should have been at school, but he had hard work on him instead. And this, religiously, this lyric here, this line, he cracked under all the pressure, started linking crack fiends, right? Double entendre. The funny thing about this is that you can take this two ways. You can take this as in the character, because again, the album essentially is Avelino basically, you know, it's, it's kind of like a rousing declaration of coming up from the struggle, but it also doesn't kind of romanticize it. It kind of tells it in the whole, in the stark reality that what it is. And I kind of get the feeling like I did when I grew up and I kind of avoided all the pitfalls of growing up in a really rough area of town of, you know, of London, wherever it may be. I didn't really take it. I didn't really take any credit for it really. I was just lucky. And I think back at it now, like, you know, I have a lot of friends or people that I know who, you know, ended up in prison or ended up dead or ended up doing some crazy stuff and got away with it or got deported, whatever it may be. And sometimes when people say that sort of stuff, it can kind of sound like a brag, like a weird, humble brag. Oh, I know some really dangerous people, but it's not really like that. It's just sometimes you grow up in an area and you have no real influence on who people, who lives around you and everyone that lives around you because you're a kid and you want people to play, play with. It just happens to be your friends. You don't really look too deep into it because, you know, just these kids are living in your area. 
they're around they don't like play football they like playing video games they like listen to music they like going to flipping house parties or you know trying to link girls or whatnot and that's it you just kind of you know just hang out with the people that are around you because they're around you but then later on in life you start to realize that they're going down this mad path and by just pure luck you just don't follow them even though you are with them from the ages of like i don't know 10 to 15 every single day some somehow you avoid going down the the path that would lead you to some level of destruction or incarceration and again i don't take any personal credit for it um you can't really kind of put credit on the parents because the parents don't really see anything that kind of goes outside they can only control what happens inside the house it's just pure luck really i think so it's just pure luck it just is what it is but there are occasions where you see people around you like i remember there's this one kid that we lived in this block of flats with who kind of lived opposite us who's really happy go lucky bubbly kid and essentially we saw his life crumble in front of us like in real time um you know his dad got addicted to drugs then he ended up kind of leaving and divorcing his mum um his mum ended up kind of being essentially heartbroken and distraught about it then she turned to drugs and then eventually that kid ended up being a latchkey kid by default because his parents just got you know dragged into the depths of drugs and then you know you turn around like two years later and that kid ends up being a really really bad kid on the streets and stuff and he wasn't ever like that when he was growing up up and it, all it took was just his parents breaking up at a really pivotal time in his life maybe around 13 or 14 and then having the wrong influences around them and having too much time and not having parental guidance and then boom he goes crazy um and a lot of that was crack unfortunately especially in my area a lot of it was crack a lot of it was heroin that kind of group people it wasn't not really a meth really um and yeah it just went down a crazy street anyway it continues here just to finish his first verse it said should have been at school but he had work on him instead post code wars he didn't pick up his address no pain no game he was hurt blood it was stress just trying to get himself out of the ends had to make ends meet first because mummy's got an empty purse he knew his dad will leave but never knew he will leave in a hearse like god damn it bars no generational wealth just generational curse and this is something that you feel a lot growing up in those rough places of town like even to this day sometimes you think to yourself like what is it about growing up in these places that just makes it it feels like you're always kind of stuck in quicksand that's what i remember thinking being from ends like whenever you make a little bit of headway something always comes along to kind of pull you back down again and i feel like those instances are usually forks in the road that make you decide what which way do you want to go and a lot of people end up you know resorting to a life of crime not because they want to be flipping you know pablo escobar just because they want to make ends meet like when flipping you know when when swiping i'm sure a lot of you guys from where you were i'm sure you had an era in your life growing up where you know there was a period in time where people were swiping cards i think in america you might call it cracking when that stuff was banging in the uk people were swiping cards and going to selfridges and trying to you know get gucci jackets and all that sort of stuff there were some people that were doing it just to have gums to flip and drip on where they can go house parties but most people were doing that swiping thing just so they can sell stuff on they'd go to north face shops and all this malarkey buy coats and then just try and sell them on to get money that was it just usually to you know literally for to keep the lights on to put food on the table that's why they were doing it some people would get caught go to prison some people would get fined some people would get banned from stores it'd be crazy kind of circumstances but that is essentially why they were doing it or even if they did a thing where they were doing like um a lot of people in the ends were doing you know outside of drugs a lot of people were doing stuff like um what's that thing called when you do bank drops i forgot what the technique is but essentially you give the person a card um your bank account and then they basically transfer a certain amount of money to you usually they'll lie they'll say oh it's a certain they'll say maybe it's 50 it's 10 grand but actually it's 50 but then they'll tell you oh um they'll they'll keep like 70 percent of it or something crazy right it's really really weird how much they'll flip and keep and as, as a split it doesn't make any sense but then what happens is that your account usually gets burned but then you have the ability to take the cash out straight away and usually they come with you to collect the cash it's a weird strange way but anyway that's what people did and mostly most of the time people did it was legitimately legitimately just to put food on the table like people were doing it to buy computers and laptops and shit because they wanted to get started on making music so that they can kind of get themselves out of their ends some people were doing it to buy boots and to buy train tickets and bus fare to go to football trials it was nothing lavish it wasn't like people were buying lamborghinis with it like they do with flipping pandemic aid money people are legitimately doing it just to pay the bills or pay debts off and stuff and you know sometimes you know once you get a, a kind of a taste for that quick money it's very difficult then to turn around and work at flipping you know jd sports and stuff it's not really it's not really the right yeah exactly car, car, um 
Charles Lucas knows exactly your account gets blacklisted for years. Yeah, I know loads of people that did it. Loads of people that did it. Um, and some people unfortunately did it and it didn't work and their account still got blacklisted. And sometimes if you don't have good credit and your account gets blacklisted, no, it's like, if you don't have good credit, sometimes you don't you don't get offered good accounts. You sometimes just get offered an account that has like a cash card. So imagine you get blacklisted. Now you don't have an account and you don't, uh, uh, you know, you couldn't get an account anyway, a normal one. So you have to get like a cash card one that doesn't have any benefits. Now you don't even have that. So now you're a person from London, right? This multicultural place, right? One, you know, in one of the most prosperous countries in the world, but you have no bank account. So now if you'd want to get a job, where are your flipping wages going to be paid into? That's why I knew loads of people who had their monies from work going into their flipping mum's accounts because they legitimately burned theirs from doing flipping ACs and stuff and drops and swiping. Imagine how flipped up that what that life is. So when Avilion flipping wrapped this, I was flipping right on board and it continues. Um, from mud, he really came from the dirt. He started cleaning up one foot on the other. Uh, one, what's that, one foot in front of the other, our car, he ain't seen enough. But that boy's loyal to the soil, so his team was up. So you, you should have seen the love he was getting once he was getting up. All the parties... Uh, all the parties they let his bread this bring in all the weapons in this is something as well you you heard of all the time happening i remember there was a place especially it's happened quite often this place in um where i used, where I used to live in east london called beckton there was this there was this place called st mark's church where people used to have like parties and stuff it's weird to, it's called st mark's church basically it's like a community hall type place that also had a church on the sundays but sometimes people will put on events in the main hall like parties and whatnot birthday parties um you know it, parties that you could buy tickets for and stuff and you just turn up sometimes to be able to slip in and whatnot especially if you're nice to the aunties and then sometimes if it was a proper rave people would pull up with you know people would pull up there because there'd be guys from different areas that would kind of go there also and they kind of want to go ride out on their ops and obviously some of them would bring weapons into the places and the security guards may know them from ends and whatnot and just let them through with weapons knowing fully well what may happen in there and sometimes innocent people would get flipping yanked up and then you're in this house party and the actual person who's the party ends up getting yanked up and you're thinking bloody hell and usually it happened quite early in the rave you'd get there and you only have like you know um you'd only get there flipping two two hours in and then straight the flipping thing got locked off and you'd be so pissed and usually it was always the one that you, that you loved i remember there'll be times i'll be there like you know because i used to get zero love at flipping house parties or these raves at all i used to get zero love it was hard out there for me so i'd be there battling these fucking you know green-eyed mixed race boys right with pink lips that all the girls loved and here's me trying to go in there and trying to make it work and it's a struggle then you finally get some action you're finally getting a bit of a winding and then all you hear is pa 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 or you hear people screaming, or some glass marriage is on the floor, or somebody shouting, and you know the rave's locked off, you're like, oh no, you know it's locked off, it's like in the middle of your wine, you're like, no man, give me five more minutes, five more minutes, but you know it's done, and it continues, it says, um, it was still grandma's prayers that kept it, that kept, that, so it was still grandma's prayers that were protecting him because he had a third of the ends in second guessing him and they reckon one of the days that was his day of reckoning got it from the kitchen so man was thinking of chefing him he was paranoid because in the cut they were stabbing his boy he felt like the game chose him and he never had a choice money or the violence his older said choose wisely couldn't trust a soul so he never could choose wifey too hard couldn't couldn't he met then he met his good girl with some good traits from a good home out of town with his good mates he took her home he said baby life's a bitch give a dog a bone she wasn't giving up on him and it gave him hope but he weren't trying to get too close because anything he ever loved just ended up in smoke but he was like this twin but he was like his twin flame but she was like his twin flame. He felt connected to her soul. It was like his trauma just disappeared whenever he would hold him up. So he held her down, showed her off and took her out. Saw a future with her because his presence made him smile. Plus you wouldn't judge even though the been through trials is too good to be true. He's in denial. Honestly, brother, I swear this is really good. And the funny thing about it is because he's kind of talking about, you know, a girl that he met. That kind of was able to show him a different side of life but i think the best thing about growing up in ends because it's such a flipping bubble and it's so harsh it's so brutal when you do find people or you meet people at work or just people from interest like me you know my main thing of kind of escaping was usually like you know sneaker culture and whatnot and streetwear and going to stores that's where i kind of you know developed and found a found a group of friends that were kind of outside of my little ends bubble usually usually 
those were good occasions because it kind of opened you up to what life is like outside of your postcode and it kind of showed you that life isn't so crazy outside of where you're from um it actually gets better if you're able to kind of you know knuckle down and do the work and figure something out there is a pathway there is a pathway for you forward but it does take some time so really do recommend you check it out my favorite track track free twin flame on god save the streets by avelino honestly really one of the best albums i've heard this year so far definitely up there for album of the year for me especially when you consider it's like 11 tracks long it's got a feature here featuring my one of my favorite uk grime uk rap hybrid type of rappers from back in the day called ra from roadside g's if you know you know south london legend brixton legend obviously to be specific and a few other really good ones too and of course red fred 2 features on it there's some really good spoken word sort of um you know um uh intros and outros and some of the songs as well the switch ups are amazing i think this song here one of one a piece by ralphie by ralph raffi by raff raffi sorry is really good also definitely check this out but yeah the whole album 11 tracks long it's about 30 minutes 40 minutes in length really nice and tight listen i banged out in the gym today while so i was breaking my back doing deadlifts and it worked amazingly so definitely check it out i've leaned god save the streets out on all digital streaming platforms out on all digital streaming platforms 